Hello and welcome to my tutorial all about making wire slips. So wire slips are a kind of stump work. It's a kind of three-dimensional hand embroidery process. So when we usually do our hand embroidery, it's surface hand embroidery. So we're actually stitching into our fabric and that's it. You know, we do get some three-dimensionality. However, if you want to have that extra punch, you can do a technique like this, the wired slips. So let me tell you what you're going to need to make it happen. So obviously you need some wire. Um, this is just wire for floral arranging. Um, it comes in, you can get green like this, which I would recommend for doing leaves. You can also get the white wrapped wire. I use this for my hibiscus petals here. I didn't really want green showing through. One thing you can do is use an archival pen and color this white wire to match your embroidery floss if you're worried about it showing through. I kind of like to be able to see it a little bit because then that lets me know when I need to add more stitches to actually get full coverage. So look for your wire. You're also going to want to pay attention to the size. So the skinnier stuff I think is better. You know, I mean, you don't want to go so skinny that it doesn't have any life to it, but if it's skinnier, you're going to have less of a, a bulky edge here because this is where your wire is, right? All, all along the edge. If that wire is thicker, then you're going to have a thicker outline here. So I try to go for the smaller size. So it's kind of confusing. This is 26, but it's the thicker wire versus this is the 33, which is the skinniest wire I have. Wire. There you go. <laughs> I, I have found it on Amazon. You get a pack of what, like 50, 100. You'll, you'll have plenty. <laughs> okay, so you need wire. You also need some fabric to do your stitching. So as an example here, I have my greens. It's important to match your fabric to the floss. So in this case, I'm going to demonstrate stitching a leaf. So if I was going to stitch this leaf, I would definitely recommend using this fabric. And the reason for that is when we cut out our shape, you're going to see a teeny tiny bit of the fabric still. Like no matter how close and how good you are at, at cutting out, there's going to be a little bit of like frayed fabric there. And the better it matches to your floss color, the least like... <laughs> The less likely, oh my goodness, it's just getting worse. The less likely you're going to be able to see that, right? So you want it to be camouflaged. So um, like here's a perfect match and here's a perfect match. So that's the nice thing. This is that Kona cotton and it comes in like every color. So that's cool. I'm actually demonstrating on this kind of minty color just because I was afraid this would be too dark to see what I'm doing. So uh, when when I cut this out, you'll kind of get a better idea of what I mean by seeing that the fabric is kind of like you make a sandwich and you can see the jelly really bright in between. You don't want that. You want your sandwich insides matching your sandwich outsides. Okay, so we got fabric. We got uh, wire. I'm using uh, embroidery floss. I'm going to be using a single ply. I'm using a small needle. So a size embroidery nine or ten. It's just a single strand of floss. So it's, it's teeny tiny. Um, and I'm just using a tiny hoop to stitch my uh, wire slips. You don't need a large amount of fabric. You don't need a giant hoop, just the right size here. Uh, also, I have some sharp scissors. Use what works best for you. I have these really tiny ones. These ones are a little bigger, but they're heavier. It's for some reason, I just like using these for cutting out my wired slips. So Find what works best for you. Some people also like to use wire cutters, uh, needle nose pliers. I couldn't think of what those were called um, to help with shaping the wire. But for this wire, you can see it's pretty easy to manipulate just with your hands and also really easy to cut. Right. So you probably don't need that stuff. But um, if you feel like it'll help you, then go for it. Also, tweezers can be useful for helping pull the, um, the wire slip through your main embroidery project. So that's something I want to talk about really quick before we get into here. So for your main embroidery piece that you want to add your wire slips to, you're going to want to embroider it on 
two layers of fabric. So you can see here I have my top layer of fabric that I used this uh, linen blend, which is very pretty, and it makes th this section of the face easier to do. I actually use the holes in the fabric, kind of like you would for cross stitch to help me keep my lines nice and horizontal. So in the back, I just have almost some scrap fabric, just some extra neutral cotton that I had laying around. You obviously wouldn't want something like neon orange back here or something that might show through. So that's why I say just to use something neutral. So when I transferred the pattern on here, I did use a light tracing method. And I just did that on the top layer of fabric first, hooped up. Then I removed my piece from the hoop after transferring the design and added this second layer back there, right? Because I was afraid it'd be too thick to show light through if I had both layers already hooped up. So why on earth are we using two layers of fabric? So once we get to the insertion of our wired slip, we're gonna be couching the wires. But when you're couching here, you're not actually going all the way to the front of the embroidery, right? Because then you'd have these ugly stitches showing through. So what you're doing is only stitching through the, this back layer of fabric, okay? That's what it's for. Also, I think it kind of helps give the embroidery more stability because you are adding these wire pieces on here. It's a lot heavier. So I think it helps to have that extra layer of fabric. So there you go. All right, let's get stitching. All right, so first you're gonna wanna shape your wire. So you, uh, this is my pretend diagram here. I don't think that you need to actually transfer it to your fabric. I think you can just skip that step. You can just shape your wire to your diagram and then just stick it on your fabric, okay? So what I like to do when you have something with like a point at the end, I take a piece of wire here and I bend it in half and then I pinch at the end because sometimes when you pinch at the end you get instead of like a sharp end you get this kind of round end so I just take my nails and just give it a little pinch this may be where you would want to use um, needle nose pliers so see how now it's more of a sharp end so when I take it apart this I can then kind of shape it a little bit like that I don't even know what leaf I'm doing here we're gonna do the small one so it doesn't we're not here all day I think so I kind of match up and at the where the end is gonna be I kind of do the opposite I do like a little pinch in the other direction and then I do a little push here Something like that, and then I say, well, it's a little bit bigger than my guideline. I can either mess with it some more, and maybe I will, just so we're not, just so, you know, smaller leaf is going to take less time for us, so we'll go ahead and make it a little smaller, okay? So, but you can see it's not, it's definitely not perfect, and I don't think it needs to be, but, um, you know, I didn't need to transfer the design. I could just go from there to here without actually having to draw on my fabric. So it just saves you a little time. Now, if you're doing the Anna embroidery pattern, you have the crazy shaped petals. The way I did those is at first I was having a hard time getting that wiggle. I just basically did this and making like little loopy loopies. I don't know, we'll call them loopy loopies. And then from there, I turned it into a petal. Okay? Like that would be a perfect hibiscus petal. And then once you actually stitch it, you can manipulate it even more to give it that cool uh, wiggly <laughs> texture. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with this leaf. So I have a single strand of floss. Ready to go here. I actually have a knot at the end, which I think is a fine. So that's what I'm doing. Okay. And it's up to you, like depending on how many wire slips you're gonna do on a single piece of fabric, like where you want these tails, because obviously they they can be more obnoxious than 
the little screw at the top of your embroidery hoop, right? Like they could get in your way, they can get all tangled into each other and to the floss. So figure out where you want everybody to go so you're not fighting. If that means you have something like this where they're all in the middle, all the tails, or have all the tails going opposite direction, do what you need to do to make it comfortable and enjoyable. <laughs> all right, so the first step, first step is make sure you have your shape how you want it. Double check it because once you start going you can't change it. You can, well, can't change the shape but you can change the plane I guess. I'll show you, oh I can show you right now. Okay so here's my, here's a leaf that's done right? So the shape isn't going to change but the plane can right? I can make it this shaped, I can add another little curve here. I can do a bunch of different things. Obviously, the bigger your slip, the more fun you can have. Like I have this really ridiculously small one. Um, I can't do as many fun things with it, or maybe I can. Yeah, maybe I can. Look at that. So um, that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about like manipulating the slip when you're all done. Okay, where's my needle? Another option I didn't really talk about was, you know, instead of using fabric, you could use a clear fabric or sheer fabric, I should say, like organza or tulle to do some cool stuff like insect wings. I think I might do that for a project soon. Okay, so my first step, I'm just going to hold the slip with one hand and with the other, I'm just going to couch just a couple of couching stitches here. I'm not worried too much about security. This is just to get the slip down on the fabric so then I can actually do some work. At this point, I don't need to hold on to it anymore, and I'm ready to do my next step. So, step one, couching. Step two is buttonhole. So, buttonhole stitch, I'm going to come up on the outside of my wire, and I'm just coming up straight up and down, not at some weird angle. At least that's what I'm trying for. <laughs> With my setup here, it's a little awkward. So I'm going to go down on the other side of that wire, and I'm going to leave myself a little loop here. And I'm going to come back up on the outside and catch that loop and pull. So there's one buttonhole. Let's do it again. Down on the inside. Leave my little and then come up just right next to my previous stitch and pull. So a couple things to think about when you're doing this. Uh, relax. <laughs> relax, have good lighting, be comfortable. I have some, I'm apparently stitching some fuzz. Okay, use a lint roller if needed. <laughs> Alright, so when you do, when you pull through here, you can pull like up when you tighten or you can pull more parallel. So how I want to say it? Yeah, more more even with the surface. 
of your embroidery here, which is what I've been doing like that. And what happens is like we're forming a little knot on the side of our shape here. So when you pull out like that, your knot is going to be all the way around like that. If you pull up instead, your knot's going to be more on top of the wire. And I don't really care which way you do it. Just pick away and stick with it because if you don't, your edge is going to look irregular. So you want to, oh geez, see here, that's what I was talking about, getting all tangled up. You don't want that. You want to have your wire tucked away nicely like that. Okay, where am I at? What's going on, everybody? There we go. Okay. So you can see I'm just being sure to not leave any gaps. Here, I'll leave a gap just so you can see what it'll look like. So I tried to leave a gap. Okay, I guess I need to leave a bigger gap. <laughs> Trying to be bad. Oops. Oh, jeez, you guys. Bet you saw that coming. Let me tuck you over here. Okay, I guess that's step one. Tuck your tails. <laughs> what not to do. Okay, so here's another one not to do. Okay, you can see that hole there. That's what you don't want. Now, if you were using the green floss, it probably wouldn't be as noticeable and you could probably get away with it. So sometimes what I do, because it's these are really hard to undo because it's so small. So I'll go all the way around and I'll come back and just fill those in with little, uh, little stitches like this. Just little extra couching stitches to cover up the wire there. Like that. Okay. I guess I needed two. All right, so you're going to go all of the way around your shape doing that, okay? So I am not going to demonstrate that because we will be here all day. But please do that. Go all the way around. And look, just like this. This is what it'll look like when you're done. So that was the second round. So first round was our couching. Second round was going all the way around with the buttonhole. And then we have our third round before we actually get to fill. And this is going to be split stitch. And it's just split stitch. Or back split stitch if you're me. And you're just going to do it as close to that wire as you can get. And yes, you can actually split a single strand of floss. It is possible. So I recommend just using a single ply for all these steps because that'll reduce the bulkiness of the edge of your shape. Unless, of course, you want it to be more bulky and textured, then, you know, do whatever you want. And when you fill the shape, you know, if you want to use a full strand, and you could do anything. You could do fishbone stitch. You could fill with split stitch, you could fill with satin stitch. That stitch I just hit was way too big. Look at that. Bad form. Okay. And 
You can fill it with just a single color, you can fill it with multiple colors, you can fill it with variegated flash, you can fill it with anything you want. Alright, so here we are, done with that third step, and now I get to fill. Alright, so one thing I, I kind of glossed over before was make sure these stay parallel to each other, your little tails there. You don't want those crossing, you just want them... Just let them be, just like that. All right, I have a, I have a knot in my floss, so I'm gonna switch to a different color that I already have ready to go. So I'm just gonna do a long and short stitch here to fill. So the key with filling your leaf is you wanna go over the split stitch, but you don't want to go over your wire here, your buttonhole wire. So I'm going in between. And so that's kind of the point here of that split stitch, because that makes it so that you get right up there. Okay. So that when you're doing like cool stuff with your, with your leaf, you know, if you're not all the way, 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 way up there and you do something like this, you, you can have some fabric showing through, which you wouldn't want. So this helps you get way up there. Nice and tight. So I'm just doing little guideline stitches here. And we're just, wow. I'm going to make a bunch of stitches not going in the same direction at all, Jessica. What the heck? I'm I have I'm set up in such a weird way right now with my camera. I'm like my neck's all bent funny and I'm not looking straight on at this piece at all. <laughs> Alright, apparently we're doing a weird stitch direction like this. I'm just making this up as I go. So at the other end, of course, you want to make sure those stitches are filled all the way across that line of split stitch. This is like the worst filling job I've ever done in my life. This is embarrassing. All right, we're going to make it work. It works, people. Like stitch direction is non existent. Oh, my. Alright, so I'm going to finish this disaster and then uh, I'll show you how to cut it out and insert it into your main embroidery.
Okay, I think I actually saved that. <laughs> I was able to grab some more floss and fill it in. So at this point, you can go ahead and trim some of your tail. You can trim it earlier, but sometimes I like to keep it longer so you can hook it around the outside of your hoop. Because in theory, that's probably the best way to keep it out of your way. Unlike how I had it earlier where it was just getting all caught up. <laughs> all right, so you're going to, you know, do all your stitching. Get all of your leaves or petals, whatever you're making, stitched. You can see uh, it's a time-consuming process. And then what I like to do is use some larger scissors to just do some... You know, bulk cutting <laughs> so that you don't have to handle all of them in your hands at once. Okay. All right. There's my leaf. So I want to do something about this side. So I'm going to go ahead and do some trimming here. Now, some people like to put glue on theirs, I avoid it if I can. I used to be a little bit more glue friendly, but I guess just there's like archival consequences. I mean, I don't know where this will end up someday. Hopefully not the trash, but it could be. <laughs> so might not be too much of a concern. It depends. There's like acid free glues you can get to be more safe. But yeah, so you might want to put glue on the back if you're concerned about that. Or some uh, fray checks, some some product like that. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and I feel like the the smaller the wire slip, the shorter the tail. But go for at least an inch, I'd say, maybe inch and a half, and then you can always trim more later. Bye bye. Okay. So here we go. So if you look at your fabric, you can kind of almost pull the edge away to see, let's see if I can actually get you in focus there. You can kind of pull your fabric away to give you an idea of where you're going. And then you're gonna cut. Don't be scared. You should sit down to do this. And if you need to make a couple of passes, and I will, I'll have to go back and, and clean this up some. Don't be afraid. Take deep breaths. And I know why it's scary, right? Because, I mean, what, this could have taken you an hour to do. You don't want to have to start over. Now, if you do end up cutting some of your stitches, definitely try to fix it with some glue. It's, it's worth it to, to try to salvage. And I found that the, oh, sorry about the focus guys, I don't know why it keeps changing its mind. Uh, the hibiscus petals were a bit challenging because of how you know, wiggly wavy the shape is. So just take your time if you need to pull out the smaller scissors like I showed you before. I have these like tiny ones. Um, go for it. Okay. So at this point, you know, it's not very clean yet. And come on, there we go. Okay, not very clean, right? And you can definitely see, remember I was talking about the sandwich? So you can see that layer. Oh, come on, camera. Oh, oh, you want to get closer. No, you want to get further away. I am a professional, I swear. Okay, so you can see that sandwich, right? You can see my jelly. So if we were using like this fabric, you wouldn't be able to see that jelly as much, okay? So when you can use a matching fabric, do it. You know, it'll save you some, some time, some grief. But what I like to do at this point is I'll kind of like scratch at it <laughs> because it almost, it kind of brings some of that fabric out so then I can trim it. See, I just kind of like got it all fluffy. And then I can go in and cut that. I think I cut my stitches, guys. Oof, did I? I was about to tell you how it's actually harder than you think to cut the stitches, and it looks like I actually did cut a stitch. I'm gonna put glue on that. So 
So for, <laughs> for my blueprint class when I did this one, they actually wanted me to demonstrate putting the glue on. So I had to like have, they had to, <laughs> they had me cut the wire and the buttonhole stitches on purpose, which was just like so painful to do to make myself do it, you know? Um, and it was really hard. So I don't know how I actually cut that stitch on accident. All right, so take as long as you want to make it as perfect as you want it, okay? And then you have a wire slip. Pretty cool. All right, we'll call it done. Here's my little leaf with a little cutout. <laughs> so let me show you how to insert a leaf like this. So I'm gonna use one of my other ones that actually matches this project I did. So, what you're going to do is use either a darning needle or some other large eye needle. This is not a darning needle. This is just probably a size one embroidery needle. And you're going to use some floss. Just I'm using six stranded here. And I'm going to couch the backside of my wire to that backing fabric. So, but first what I'm going to do is figure out where I want my leaf. I was thinking this tiny, tiny one would look super cute next to this flower. I mean, this is like a finished piece. It's like already framed. So this is just for demonstration purposes. But when you're actually trying to place your slips on your finished embroidery piece, you know, you gotta play around and figure out, um, you know, where you want it, how much curve you want in your leaf. Once you actually get it inserted into your embroidery here it's a little harder to shape I mean it's not impossible but it can be a little bit harder so you know play around with it ahead of time you know figure out where you want it for this one you know I did not stitch all the way up see look at that it's all naked under there so because right why spend the time when it's just going to get covered with the flowers so for this one I did the majority of this stitching and then put these flower petals in here to see, well, how far up do I really need to come? You can do the stump work the very first part of your project, or you can save it to the very end, whatever you wanna do. I think I did these like throughout stitching this, just to give myself some breaks. One thing to keep in mind is once you actually have them inserted in here, you know, if I needed to come back and put stitches on the other side of this wire, I wouldn't be able to do it, right? There's a wire in the way. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. You can always place a leaf just to make sure you have it where you want it and then take it out before actually couching it and get back in there if you need to add more stitches. So like, for example, for this, I'm, I'm not going to actually keep this leaf in here or maybe I will I don't know we'll see how it looks <laughs> so I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to poke a hole where I want my leaf and actually I can feel that the, <laughs> the wire for this leaf actually goes right here so I can't actually <laughs> add the leaf right there so that's another thing when you have a lot of leaves like this you may have to do some planning like I said this is done so I didn't plan to add another leaf here on this day so we're gonna put it somewhere else and put it right here because there aren't any wires right back there. So there's a couple ways you can do this. You can, oops. Usually what I do is I just try to make, make a hole and kind of spin my needle like this. Okay. One thing you can do is see how when I have my needle submerged in my fabric like this, I actually have a hole I can use. So if you want, at this point, you could take your wire and stick it in here and then pull your needle through and see how it just it pulls the wire through. I only did that with a single strand of wire because it's a little more tricky than that in real life. So... What I usually do is just kind of get in here and make a big old hole. 
and then I make sure my wire is pretty pretty good here sometimes you get this fraying and it's annoying but it hasn't really caused me any negative consequences so I just ignore it okay so then basically you're just threading your wire through the hole you made It's stuck on something. I can have one of them going through and then remember that time I said no consequences from this? Well, turns out there are consequences. <laughs> it was getting bunched up. Okay. Now I've lost my hole. There we go. This part's not always pretty or delicate. I've definitely just, you know, really pulled some through, like, aggressively to make it happen. There we go. Second or third time's the charm. So it's like in a super awkward place. I don't know why there'd be a leaf right there, but it's all good. So here's my leaf. And before I couch it down, I want to, you know, get an idea of where, where it's going to live. Again, there's some manipulation you can do after it's wired down, but it's good to do most of it ahead of time. Okay, and you're going to go to the back side of your piece. And go ahead and bend your wire down. I'll just go straight across here. You know, it's up to you where you want it. Like if you want to plan ahead and make sure that wire is going to be out of the way for additional wire slips, they're going to be inserted and go ahead and do that. And I'm going to take my floss and I'm just going to couch. And what I'm doing is I'm going to get my finger back there so I have a better, a little better control. I'm only going through that backing fabric, okay? And it doesn't have to be pretty. And I'm using this crazy color so that you, you can actually see what I'm doing. You might not want to use a crazy color. So you don't want it to show through to the front. All right, so I'm going to check. So you can see under my, my leaf here. See there's no stitches because it's in between those two layers. Pretty clever, huh? some oops that's a bad thing to be stuck on what's going on here guys all right and don't mess up the rest of your embroidery while trying to do this all right so you're gonna go down with this maybe a half inch you can go a little further I don't know if there's anyone that's gonna be coming up to your embroidery with a piece of with some tweezers trying to pull out your wire slips hopefully not it should be plenty secure. So then you just bend your wire back over itself and go back the way you came. Okay. The whole while, you know, double checking as needed to make sure that none of those stitches are showing through. Okay. So you can see how my leaf is kind of sticking up crazy now. So you can come in and, and manipulate it back to where you want it. Okay. And when you're done with that floss in the end, you just kind of tie it off like you would any other. And that's it. Awesome. I hope you enjoyed that. It can be a little intimidating, but honestly, it's just time consuming. I think you guys can do it. Have fun. Wait, don't go. <laughs> I've been doing some thinking. So one thing about the method I just showed you for creating these wired slips, it's a great method, but there's a lot of variation I think you can do and I think you can play with. I really want to spend the time and if, if I get some time <laughs> and try some variations, but here's some ideas I have. Um, Cause one thing that bothers me about this method is this edge and that sometimes it's not like a perfectly beautiful, smooth edge, right? We have this, the bumpiness from the stitches. And then sometimes we have like the frayed fabric, um, so there, I'm sure there's different things you can try. Maybe there's a fabric that wouldn't have that frayed edge so much. Maybe there's a different fabric you could try. Maybe instead of the buttonhole, you just do couching all the way around. 
um, I did pull out some glue. <laughs> uh, and what I did is I, I just painted a little bit on the edge of my leaf and kind of slicked it back like a hairdo to get some of those little frayed edges that I couldn't get with scissors out of my life. You guys, can you fight a different time? Like, really? I love my cats. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of different things you can try. One uh, stump work embroidery artist I am super inspired by, her name is Pippa Haynes, and she actually stitches over her wire slips like this. And I, guys, I'd never tried it before. This was my first, my first effort and it doesn't look so good. Um, you really need to pay attention to where you're laying down your threads. <laughs> like, what is that? Um, so, uh, the point of this is to show you it's good to practice. It's good to try new things and to have some stuff like this around to just play with. Okay. Like this, I don't know. I don't want you to see this kind of thing as a waste. This is, this is good. This is experimenting. This is like, this is good. Okay. So then as I throw it, so now I'm working on this one. And actually one thing I wanted to point out with this one is this is the slightly thicker wire and you could see the difference, right? In the edge being a lot thicker. So maybe that's another thing is to try skinnier and skinnier wire, like try to find the thinnest wire on the planet. I'm going to do that. <laughs> All right. So for this one, I really didn't think I would like this method. I thought it would just be way too tedious and it is tedious, but wow, look at that. I mean, it looks really good. <laughs> like I have a lot of practice to do here still. Um, cause I was just, I kind of changed direction. And so I have some, some, a little bit of weird stuff going on, but basically I just, I have a single strand of floss and I'm kind of working it almost like a long and short, but not at all. But in the sense that I'm kind of, when I come up, I'm coming up kind of in different spots along here, but I'm going, I'm trying to stay even as I go down. And one thing that I'm finding useful is to actually, you know, place the floss where I want it and then hold it before coming up. Okay. And I'm just going around and around and around and around. I'm not sure I can actually See if I can demonstrate that without messing it up. <laughs> it's coming up. And then, yeah, it's like super awkward for me. I am not left-handed, what am I thinking? There we go, just like that. So around and around and around, just covering the edge, kind of like you would do like with a, with a patch or something. Um, so now I kind of want to go back and redo every single wire slip I've ever done like this, <laughs> but I won't, but it's just another option. Okay. Like, can you imagine what the hibiscus petals would look like if you did this? Of course. Can you imagine how much time that would take? So as with anything with hand embroidery, I think there's more than one way and sometimes determining which way works for you depends on the time you have. So this is cool. Anyways, there's a lot of fun stuff I want to do. I'm, I'm excited to show it to you guys. So stay tuned. I'm sure there's going to be an update to this video. Hopefully there's an update to all the videos, right? Because I want to get better and learn, learn new things. And I hope you do too. Okay. 